Dude, what? That's him right there. Ooh. Dude, this is nuts. What are the freaking odds? So I'm back in Tennessee. Um, it's the beginning of August. And I'm getting ready for the velvet season again. I'm at a place that I've got a lot of history with and I've never killed a deer at this spot. Uh, but I just had a huge buck show up. And I'm hoping that that buck is still bedded down like right over here somewhere. I'm actually gonna go back to my other spot and uh, see if I can't ease up and glass this hillside and lay eyes on him. These deer are probably like 100, 100 yards below this hill. And I actually see another buck coming. I'm gonna hang here for a minute and see if this deer is here. He was here like a couple hours ago. So now he's probably bedded close. Oh my gosh, there he is, there he is. That was crazy. I don't know what deer that is from years past. Like I just, I don't, I'm not sure what deer that is. I mean, I've got lots of history in a lot of these places and I, I just, I haven't connected the dots on what deer that is, but that's the one we're after, no doubt. He is an absolute stud. All right, we got, we got, we, no, 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 sorry. So here we go. We've been debating the last like 30 minutes on, I like to play the dice game when we're, when we're doing, uh, shooting our bows, so. We're in Tennessee. The opener starts tomorrow. All the boys are heading to town. We've got like 15 people staying in this tiny Airbnb. I think 16. 16 people in this tiny Airbnb. So that's going to be interesting, but we've been de debating on what the payment would be to whoever loses the dice game. What we've come up with is the original plan was a Sharpie marker, a unibrow to show up to dinner, but Kendall has an important business meeting on Monday. <laughs> And probably wouldn't be the best idea for me, um, <laughs> but instead I've come up with the paper mate, which will come off, but whoever wins this challenge gets to do the unibrow on the loser. But when you're hunting all weekend. No, we're not. Why? No, 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 no. Why? I'm not going to be in a stand and shoot a deer with a unibrow. <laughs> that's the game. No, that's not happening. I, I also think it could be a unibrow with some, you know, we'll, we'll fancy lashes or something. You know. <laughs> yeah, all right, well, let me show you all the game. Okay. The game is you roll the dice. You have to throw it past a certain line. So you huck it out there. Here's the part where luck comes into play. Whatever side is showing, so for example, like it could be angled at you this way. You're like, all right, I'm gonna take the easier shot and go for two. So if you hit it in the yellow or the white, it counts for two points. You could gamble and say, I'm gonna go on the side that's sort of not facing me and try and go for five. But if you don't hit it in the white, you do not get points. I think we roll twice. Two, two times a man, whoever's got the least amount of points at the end of the two rolls <laughs> gets sharpied on their face. Sound fair? <laughs> right. Yeah, I like it. I'm in. Tristan's 100% losing this, by the way. <laughs> hey, whoa! Hey, whoa. Oh no. Uh oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Dude, zero. There's no touching no, light. I need, no, I need a second opinion. No, on no, no. I There's no touching opinion. light. Oh, that's tough.
think it's the same shot. <laughs> Ugh, we give suck, minute, guys. Minute, <laughs> oh, no. All I gotta say is don't lose my arrow. <laughs> so that means you're going for the one. No. Oh! Okay. One in the hole. One zero, Tristan. Good shoot, Tex. Way to put the pressure on us. <laughs> This is like not going how I saw it going. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We're hanging in there, baby. <laughs> so there's definitely going to be a tiebreaker. There's a chance. There's a chance. I still got a chance. No, bro. <laughs> Where were you aiming? <laughs> he hit my little ball. The I got so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna be the most dramatic part of the whole video. Like, even if we kill a deer tomorrow. This is so bad. <laughs> Wait, hold on, you have one point. No, no, no. You well, we're going into overtime now. We're going into overtime now. So the regulation. So I won. Correct. You correct. You won. With one point, you won. <laughs> How's it feel? As the winner, it feels really good because everybody was doubting me because I've never shot anybody of these bows. But I'm really hoping that it's Lee. <laughs> I know that. That's that's a given. Yeah, hoping Lee loses here, so <laughs> no pressure here. I wasn't doing that twice. <laughs> I was not doing that twice. All right, four points. All right, I feel good about that. <laughs> That's what makes the game great. It's a combo of luck and skill. Oh, no. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. I'm not even mad. That was amazing. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. <laughs> Did you see the end yeah. of that? <laughs> go time, baby. <laughs> My man is dialed. <laughs> I wasn't going for that three. Oh, he got it. My God. You still got to hit it. My heart is You still like got to do me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Me too. Dude, I'm, I can't even watch. <laughs> I don't, I'm telling you, I don't even feel this feeling. <laughs> I've got 150 inch deer walking into me. This is like nothing I've felt before. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Jason, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> The nerves got me, man. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god. No, I have to do this to you. I didn't want that. Well, it's your choice. Nobody now. wanted that. How much you Every, did Yeah, I know. Everyone was cheering against me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, Tristan genuinely does not want to be doing this. <laughs> He's got some wheat growing right here. Look, you got to do the actual eyebrows the same color. Though. Oh. oh no. We got some good juice on this one. <laughs> You're ready for war, baby. <laughs> Don't make bets with your friends. <laughs> All right. It's kind of weird saying this. I've got that, that butterfly feeling. Opening day, deer season 2023. It's late August, Tennessee velvet season. And we're after a deer that I don't have a name for him. I have no history with this deer. I don't, I've been scrolling through all kinds of trail camera pictures from years past. I just, I don't know what deer he is. Uh, I know he's a big one though. And it's at a place that we've probably had permission on for like four or five years. Never killed a deer there. 
uh, in four or five years of having having hunting permission here. And this deer just, I don't know, my other spots that I normally see them in the summertime have gone cold. This one, it's got a nice bachelor group of bucks in it and kind of the deal that's going on is uh, these deer seem to be on sort of a three to four or five day rotation. Um, he's got no problem daylighting in here. It's just a matter of if he's going to do it in the three days that we're going to be here. The mornings have been almost dead. Uh, we're just sitting this morning just because we're too excited. But the evenings have been when the most action has been. And he showed up two nights ago, which I was honestly hoping to not see him. I was hoping to not see him leading into this weekend because then I know he's like due to come through. But he came through two nights ago, which I'm hoping is not the loop that he's going to make and then he's going to be going for four or five days before he comes back through but it seems like he's on a similar rotation to that so we're going to slip in this morning there's been a little bit of morning activity he showed up like a week or so ago in the morning we've only got six sets so i want to make sure that we're in every chance we can bro what i never seen one that's him right there cool. Dude, what? Dude, this is nuts. What are the freaking odds? I, so I drive, dude. I drive through here all the time. I've never seen this. We need them to cross the road and go that way. I don't know what they're wanting to do. There's no point in getting in the stand. I feel like we just need to sit back and watch, watch what direction they go. Let's, I'm gonna back way up and turn the lights off and just we'll just watch which direction they go. I think they were wanting to cross the road that way, yeah. and if that's the case, that's the direction of of our spot. Yeah, here he comes. I think we just sit here and wait. I mean, they're they're not they're not gonna stay here for much longer. If they make a break that way, we've got a quarter mile to loop around and go beat them off, beat them, and get in the stand. Hmm. Let's just sit here and watch what they do. Okay, they're moving off now. They're headed towards us. Let's go get the tree. All right, we're in the clear. <laughs> Jogger coming down the street. I just don't want to see him. I don't want him to see us getting ready. neighborhood ninja mode right now uh, it's nothing like the reminder of deer season when you hear AC units cranking on in the morning it's supposed to be a hundred and one degrees here in Tennessee today well it's supposed to be 101 degrees today in Tennessee I think tomorrow it's supposed to, supposed to be about the same I totally forgot this morning was kind of uh, a cluster but Opening day in the morning, I typically always open up with a prayer just to kick our season off on the right foot. Uh, not just for me and for us, uh, but for you guys at home watching. And let me let me be clear too, like I'm as flawed as anybody out there. I'm as messed up. I got a potty mouth. You know, I'm not a perfect human. I'm as flawed as as anybody watching this video. Uh, but we're all people. We try our best, and obviously because I'm a flawed person, that's why we need a savior. So again, that's why we take it to God. So I'm gonna kick us off a little opening prayer. Uh, Father, thank you for another deer season. Uh, thank you that we get to uh, come out, get still and just enjoy your creation. Uh, I pray that you're with us this season. I pray that you're with everybody watching this video and then everybody just has a blessed season and every time we hunt that maybe we take a second to be still and thank you. We love you. Thank you for your son. Send you to stay with pray. Good luck. You're coming with me. Good luck. You're not coming with me. 
Bro, it is 100 degrees outside. I'm what are you doing? It is comfortable. No, it's breathable. It's I'm telling you, degrees. it's made for early season. Look at this guy. It's made for, look, look, this is thin. This is thin. It's breathable. No. I'm you telling you. Bibs and a hoodie. I'm telling you. It's going to be nice. It's, it's going to be nice. Degrees. How are we feeling about today? Pretty good. Yeah? Ready to do it. You going to put them down? Mm -hmm. Okay. Dub. Is tonight the night? Tonight might be a night. Your night, though. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I didn't ask how you're feeling, by the way. Okay. How are you feeling, by the way? Um, none of your business. <laughs> um, I will tell you that I plan on killing a deer either tonight or tomorrow night. Probably tomorrow night. Tonight Tomorrow's better. Yeah, t tonight's just hot. Like tomorrow night's, there's gonna be some rain coming in. Rainstorm comes through, cools things off, and he's gonna come out 172 and three eighths. <laughs> This guy. <laughs> <laughs> We just pulled up and the truck said it was 101 degrees. We are sweating. We actually moved the stand further down the hill. We can actually see this whole bottom behind us. The major trail they come through, because there's a, fence, there's a gap in the fence right here. That's the main way they're kind of working through up into this food plot. And we're sitting right over that main gap. They're both sitting in that creek right there drinking water. There's like five or six does that came through. There's at least two bucks. I thought I saw a third behind them in the back. Dude, that might be him. Someone one right here. Oh yeah, zoom in on, zoom in on him. Pretty freaking exciting. Yeah. One thousand percent. That was the bachelor group of bucks we saw this morning. Like no doubt. Um. I I, I think what these deer are doing, they're bedding up on that opposite hillside that they all came down from, which from where they were at this morning it makes sense that they crossed the road. Basically went and bedded down over there. They all came down. First thing they did was come down the creek, drink water, and they basically are following their way down to that field or they're coming out and cutting the corner of our food plot and hit, hitting our food plot for a minute. Um, I'm sort of thinking that we need to lay off in the morning because the last thing I want to do is booger these deer in here. We know that they're working our way in the evenings. We got two more evening sets. We just need them to come basically just check our food plot in the next two sets. They didn't come tonight, which usually means you know, I feel like they kind of have a rotation where it's like they, it's like they didn't do it tonight. Maybe they'll do it tomorrow night. So sounds like uh, someone on the home team also is on the board for tonight. So we're gonna head back to the house, see how they did. Big spot. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Feels already like that. Look at this. Oh, 
white velvet. Dress, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. That a baby? First blood. Alright, it's the next morning. We got a good phone call. Jason and Cheeto. Don got them one, boys. Looks like a pretty good deer, and you fog it up, buddy. There we go. It's a little humid. So, they called in the recruit to come help them get him out. Yeah, yeah, dude. First velvet deer? <laughs> yeah, first velvet deer. Jason is a, is a new taxidermy man, so. Which, you, dude, I'm impressed with all the stuff you've done so far. I appreciate it. So he's being super protective of the, the deer that we're getting a hold of. He's going on the wall. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no doubt. Yeah, I'm I'm All right, day two of the velvet hunt. Um, late out of there this morning. Um, I just think we're doing more harm than good, pushing in there in the mornings. So we laid off of it, trying to be smart about this. The plan is I'm gonna try and get permission from the neighbor to the left. Uh, she owns all the property where these deer were at. I've talked to her for years and she's super nice has always sort of been on the fence about it and always landed on the side of no and if we can get her to just i, I mean i'm literally just going to try and just get permission for today or even just just today and tomorrow or even just today just see if we can't get in there for an evening uh because i i re really believe we figured out what these deer are doing as soon as they're getting out of their beds from that opposite hillside they're coming down and drinking water out of the creek Hopefully we get a yes. She's home, but she won't answer. I literally saw her through the window. She just won't answer. We're in, buddy. Uh, she just moved in. This is actually a place that I went to years ago. The person said no, but she's she bought the house, I guess, like a year ago, and uh, explained the situation. I'm like, look, we're after one deer like just one she's like just one and I was like it's just for the today and tomorrow she's like okay that's fine if it's just one it's like done deal so I guess we can take a peek at this I mean this goes down to the creek it's probably a few hundred yards kind of up the creek from where we saw him yesterday but let's at least like take a peek off the back side of this real quick the German Shepherd chasing a doe that German deer, Shepherd, so I, was you, I no. thought it was deer coming too, but it was a German Shepherd that was just hauling after a doe. Well, now I really don't know what to do. So what we're trying to dis decide is, do we hunt this new spot we just got? Or do we stick it out of the food plot, which is down the creek? I feel like our odds are better here. If we're looking at the problem is we gotta go pull our other set. I'm thinking if we're looking at tonight's set, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow afternoon, I feel like this is the place to be. More better odds than I feel like our food plot. Because there's, there's trails coming along this hillside over here that are all funneling into this bottom. And there's trails that are following this creek right here pretty heavy. All right, so we just got back to our food plot and we definitely made the right call because our food plot is currently getting weed whacked as we speak. So we're gonna go pull our set, get in the other spot. And uh, we will definitely ride it out there tonight, tomorrow morning and Sunday evening.
That was kind of chaotic, so I don't, I don't know how you can tell what just happened, but we literally just got set. I didn't even have my release, like nothing. I had my lineman self on the tree. I didn't even have my dead yet. The whole bachelor group came down the hill right beside us, and I could have shot him at probably 45 yards, but he's 10 yards across our property line. What I'm hoping is that if these two do the same thing they did last night, they want to end up at the field at the end of the creek down here. So I'm hoping they're going to work this ridge, come down in the creek, and work their way back by us as they go to that field this evening. So we're in a good spot. Brand new spot. Just got it today. I feel good about I feel good about our odds. But we got tonight if they come back down. We got tomorrow too. Yeah. That was a freaking cluster, dude. I hit him high, but it's going straight down into him. I'm pretty sure that he's freaking dead. You couldn't see him there? No, dude, I, ha I had him. I had nothing. I, I know. I was about to just be I like, just... dude, forget filming. I was about to just do it. I there, have, there, I have, there I can only go to five. I had him perfectly broadside quartered away, and that was basically the next best chance. So you were on him. It's just his body, but yeah. We'll do the two shot. Dude. I'm, I'm nervous about the hit. It's high. Yeah. But I was at full draw for like two minutes. And I couldn't let down because that buck below us was staring at us. I know. I'm shaking like a freaking leaf, dude. That deer's huge. I had to, I had to move. Somewhere. I know, dude. That the, the second we climbed into this tree, it was nothing. It was, it was mayhem. After looking at the shot, we confirmed the hit was high and likely did not have an exit. With almost no blood trail and a rainstorm pushing through, we searched all night hoping to find the deer. The next morning, we get permission to look on another property and find him. A dramatic situation unfolds and the cops are called. We contact the game warden and end up getting the situation resolved. Like a knight in shining armor, my good buddy Catman comes to help us retrieve the deer with his boat. To hear the full story in detail, check out the podcast we recorded telling this recovery story. Bittersweet thing right now because I'm extremely upset with how all this transpired, but at the same time, I'm glad that it's done and uh, couldn't do it without buddies. 
here helping me along the whole way. So, um, again, like I said, we just did everything that we possibly could in our power to do this right uh, and finish what we started. Um, so anyways, he's ours. We're gonna get him loaded up, get him home, get him taken care of. Make sure this deer goes to a complete good use uh, with the meat and everything like that, so. Got him caped out, I uh, got him quartered out, taking him to the processor now. I'm trying to think of some takeaways here. This was uh, not the way I wanted it to go down. Uh, I am proud of the way that we stayed on him, didn't do, or just didn't give up, and uh, went through all the right courses of action, calling the game warden, involving them, just making sure that we were doing everything to the best of our abilities uh, to do it the right way uh, when retrieving a deer. Obviously not an ideal situation. I think my biggest takeaway from this whole ordeal is uh, the animal comes first and again like we're still learning as we go along with this I had a perfect broadside shot at 15 yards that this deer gave me and as a bow hunter You were looking for that shot and he gave it to me um, and because it wasn't on film I elected to pass and I think a lesson learned here is That super high percentage shot the shot that a deer gave me uh, take it Animal comes first, filming comes second. If we get the filming on it, great. Uh, but if not, again, like I'm okay with the animal coming first and taking my maximum odd shot. The deer started facing to us, started to go away, and um, my buddy Jack could get on him. He did a great job doing everything he could, but by the time he got on him and you know me being able to get a shot on him, it just was not the perfect shot opportunity. Um, so appreciate you guys watching. We will. Catch you on the next one. Hi, Leroy. Hi. How's it going, pal? BJ and Cheeto here. Oh, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks for letting us shoot deer with you, pal. Yeah, dude. We had a blast. You're a good friend. Michaels. Love you. Nux. Loves. Give him a kiss, Cheeto. <laughs>